All right, we're gonna take a look at some exponential growth and decay problems here. You took a look at a few in the book already. I'm gonna work through example six on page uh, 419. It has to do with a cooling curve. And so a fairly basic problem here, uh, we're putting something in a 60 degree room and it's starting out at 100 degrees and then it cools down to 90 degrees in the first 10 minutes. Um, and so we want to figure out how much longer will it take to get down to 80 degrees. Uh, and so to do this problem we have to draw on one property from physics, uh, Newton's law of cooling, which is right here with the asterisk which means the rate of change of our object is proportional to the difference in temperature of the room. Remember, proportional means you multiply by some constant k. So the rate of change of our object, that's a derivative. Rate of change is a derivative. So dy dx is equal to uh, that rate of change is proportional, so I put a K, to the difference in temperature to the room. So the difference in temperature, and the difference in temperature is our object, however that temperature, what that temperature is, Y, minus the uh, degrees in the room, which is 60. All right. So that's the difference in temperature between the room and our object. So we need to now figure out our uh, equation to this by separating the variables. We need to get all our y's on one side and all our x's on the other. So I'm going to move a few things here, um, multiply by dx on both sides, and then we're going to divide by y minus 60 to both sides. Um, the dx's will go away. I think the right side is a little easier to visualize. We're going to have k times dx. On the other side we will have a dy. We're going to be dividing by y minus 60, so to write that a little bit easier I'm going to write that as y, 1 over y minus 60. Actually, the way I wrote that is pretty bad. It looks like the dy is in the bottom, doesn't it? Let me write that a little bit better. There we go. 1 over y minus 60. So we have all our y's on one side and all our x's on the other. We have separated our variables. Now we can take the integral of both sides. So we're going to take the integral of the left and the integral of the right. So, the integral of a constant is just kx plus c equals. Now on the other side, it's going to take a little bit of doing. Um, we're going to have to do a quick u substitution here. So we're going to make u equal to uh, y minus 60 so that this essentially becomes the integral of 1 over u and our du nice here is simply 1 so we don't actually have to do anything with our du that simplifies the integral quite a bit so that integral is simply the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c so down here we're going to have the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 60, plugging back in the u. And I could put a plus c here, but I have a plus c on the other side, so I don't technically need it. Uh, you only need one plus c. Um, and as a side note, I did put absolute value signs on this, but of course y, which is the temperature of our object, starts out at 90 degrees and then is cooling down to 80 degrees and will cool down close to 60 but will never actually get there and so these absolute value signs are unnecessary 
because y is bigger than 60, this will always be positive. You don't actually need them. I'll keep them there for one more step, though, or at least for this one. Uh, we want to get rid of that natural log, so to get rid of the natural log, we have to take e to the power of both sides. So take e to the power of both sides, the e and the natural log will cancel out. You're left with y minus 60 equals e to the kx plus c. Yes, the plus c does have to be in the exponent. Uh, add 60 to both sides, add 60, and we'll be left with y, our temperature equals e to the kx plus c plus 60. All right, and now one more side note here for this part right here. We can rewrite that. Those are exponents they're adding, which means that they were multiplying. Oops. I wrote that wrong. That was supposed to be an x times e to the c. So I'm going to rewrite it that way. Of course, when you're multiplying, you add the exponents, which is why it became kx plus c. You add exponents when your bases are the same. So I'm kind of going backwards there. Uh, but that pulls the c out of this exponent and a number to the power of an unknown constant is simply an unknown number, which is just another c. So we can rewrite this as c times e to the kx. This whole thing here becomes a c. So our equation is y equals c times e to the kx plus 60. Now we have our equation. We can actually start solving this problem. So I'm going to rewrite this up here closer to our word problem. e to the kx plus 60. And we can start looking at our initial conditions and plug some things in here. All right, so I see here we are starting at 100 degrees. So that means when our time is equal to zero, that our temperature, call it Y, is equal to 100. Now I said time for T, that's actually an X value. So when X equals zero, our Y value, our temperature is 100. to the k times 0 plus 60. Uh, 0 times k is 0. Anything to the 0 is 1. So that's c plus 60 equals 100. So that c is going to equal 40, it looks like. That one is nice and easy to do. I'm going to rewrite our equation one more time. Y equals 40 now e to the kx plus 60. I'd like to get rid of that k. I think it's going to be some sort of decimal. Uh, we have to use our other condition. They gave us one more thing here. Um, uh, let's see. It becomes 90 degrees in 10 minutes. So that gives us the condition when x is 10 minutes our temperature is 90 degrees. So now we can plug those in real quick and see if we can solve for K. So 90 equals 40 times E to the 10 X plus 60. Uh, subtract 60 from both sides and divide by 40 and you will get uh, three-fourths, it looks like, equals 
e to the 10x, or sorry, I that said uh, the x became 10. That should be 10k. Wait, no, that one was good. It was this one. X became 10. It was k that we are looking for. Oops. X was 10. We're trying to solve for k. So 10k. And then we want to get rid of the e, which means we have to take the natural log of both sides, and then divide by 10, it looks like. Natural log of 3 fourths, natural log of that side. Sorry, that doesn't look like a natural log. So that we'll get, I'll write out the whole step here. The natural log of 3 fourths equals 10k, and then we'll divide by 10. Give you a new color here. It's a lot of white. The tens go away. And that is just something you can do on your calculator. It looks like we get a negative 0 0.02877. Negative point. 0, 2, 8, 7, 7. All right, so now we have our equation here. I'll write it back up at the top one more time. So now we have y equals, we know c is 40, e to the k, which is negative 0.2877. X plus 60. All right. And if we want to know, let's see, our last thing that we wanted to know was how long does it take to get down to 80 degrees? Well, that's a Y value. We need to figure out the x value. So plug in 80 equals 40 e to the negative 0.2877x plus 60. Uh, most of that's just algebra. Subtract 60, divide by 40, natural log both sides, divide by 0.2877. Um, I won't go through those steps. I'm guessing you can do all those. Uh, they're also in the book, uh, but you get x to equal 24.09 minutes, uh, which means if it already took 10 minutes, to go down to 90 degrees, and it takes 24 minutes to get down to 80 degrees, how much longer will it take? It was about 14 minutes. All right, so there is a, that one is actually an exponential decay, it looks like. Um, but they all work fairly similar. The big calculus piece is over here where you separate the variables, take the integral of both sides, and then simplify your problem. And down here is the solution to your differential equation. Um, everything else was just uh, algebra to try to find what all those variables equal by plugging in numbers. Uh, it's basically just a system of equations that you keep plugging in. I hope that helps.